Wait a second! I have a genius idea! <laughs> I am the Podcat Champion! Let's go! The largest scale battle that the world has ever seen is being waged on the internet. And no, this isn't about cybersecurity, no one's hacking into each other, this is about a cat. Popcat, an idle clicker and a global phenomenon. This clicker game may very well be the direct cause of World War III. We have whole countries of people competing with each other to try and have the highest number of clicks. As of recording, Hong Kong has the lead by a landslide with 10 billion more clicks than Thailand. But as we all know, war breeds innovation. And software engineers have been hard at work trying to... <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just a fucking clicker, dude. It's not that hard to automate. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna try our hand at writing a script to automate the clicking functionality of PopCat. And in the process, hopefully teach you a couple things about how web browsers work, how JavaScript works, and how programming works. So if you don't already know about programming, why don't you just strap in, get your thinking cap on, and try and, you know, comprehend kind of what we're talking about here. And if you do know about programming, well, <laughs> I don't even need to show you how to do this, but you're still gonna watch anyways, right? The first piece of information that we need to really understand to try and manipulate PopCat here is the way a web browser works. See, anytime Joe Schmo here creates a website, writing the code is not enough. That code then has to be deployed onto a server somewhere. This server will have HTTP endpoints that web browsers can send requests to. And the result of those requests will be the code that Joe Schmo wrote. The beautiful thing about this process is that every bit of the code is on your machine. See, since that code is local, you can make changes to the code without altering the server version. This is how people change text on websites all the time. So if we take a look at PopCat, we can see the website either allows us to click the cat, or we could press the G key. And since automating pressing the G key is a whole lot easier than automating actually clicking, we're gonna go ahead and use that. So first we're gonna take a look at this snippet of code here. Keep in mind, this is JavaScript, the language that powers the internet. And if you aren't already aware about the basics of JavaScript, this might be kind of hard to follow, but I'll try and explain as much as I possibly can. So the first part of this snippet of code here is us creating a variable called event, and we're setting it equal to the result of this new keyboard event constructor. So this is gonna create a new keyboard event object for us. And what this keyboard event is gonna do is simulate pressing the G key. Then you can see below we're using the set interval function, which is a built-in function in JavaScript. According to the definition, the set interval method in JavaScript is used to repeat a specified function at every given time interval. Think of it like a for loop or a do while loop, but we can control the amount of time in between each function call. The first parameter we pass in is the function that we want to continuously run. And the second parameter is the amount of time in milliseconds that we want in between each run. So if we look at the code that we have implemented, we have the time interval as zero. And the function we're passing in has a for loop. That for loop loops from zero to 100. Being on some chill, we go zero to 100 real quick and for every loop it's calling dispatch event on the document object and passing in the event that we defined above what this means is for every millisecond because we put zero in for the milliseconds we're going to run this for loop 100 times and each time it runs it's going to dispatch the key down event for the character g so every millisecond we are hitting the g key 100 times this is about as fast as we can get before popcat starts to wither and die on us all you have to do to use this is copy the code head over to the popcat website hit f12 to open up your console and then paste the code into the console and hit enter three hours later okay wait um okay hear me out could i theoretically do this wait a second i have a genius idea <laughs> i am the popcat champion let's go Okay, so just to keep it 100 with you guys, I opened a couple browsers here, I tried it. I'm not sure if it works though. It looks like it may be sending the request to the server, but there's different counts on the client, so it's hard for me to validate. But it'd be really cool if it did work. But we can make this better, and you know I'm not gonna just stop there, so let's look at making this into a browser extension. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is create a folder for our extension. I'm gonna go ahead and call mine popcat-extension. 
And the first thing any extension needs is a manifest.json file. So let's create that. So basically what this file is, is a regular JSON object that's going to have some configuration for the Chrome web store. This is going to allow us to actually publish our app, but then also test it on our browser. And if you remember back when I told you how a web browser works, you know that we're getting all of our code from a web server and then just running it. And the way a browser extension works is we can take our own code that we write in JavaScript or CSS files and inject that directly into the website. And to get us started, the first thing we have to add to our project is a name. So I'm going to call mine Sonic Popcat. And we're going to call it Sonic Popcat because, well, it just, it goes fast. Go, go, go. So then we can add a quick little description and give our app a version number and set our manifest version. And then we're going to create a content scripts property. This is going to be an array of objects that basically tell our extension how to work. And the first thing we'll add to our content scripts object is our matches property. This is going to be an array of strings that we want to look for. So if we go onto any of these URLs, we're going to apply our extension. And since we put popcat.click in there, it's going to tell our browser to inject our code whenever we visit that page. After that, we're going to need a CSS file to inject so we can add some styling to a cool little button that we're going to add onto the Popcat page. So we told manifest.json to inject style.css. Now we need to actually create that file. And finally, we add our JS property. This is going to be the JavaScript file we want to inject. In our manifest, we call it pop.js. So we're going to create a new file called pop.js. So now with this completed manifest.json, if we go to popcat.click, it's going to inject this style.css and this pop.js into our local browser code. So first let's jump into pop.js and copy paste the same code that we wrote earlier to automate popcat. So as our code stands right now, this is just going to automatically run the code no matter what whenever you go on to PopCat. And what we want to do is add a toggle button so that we can turn off the automation if we want to. To do that, I'm going to create this variable called auto and set it equal to false by default. So now we just need some logic so that if auto is false, we don't end up running any of this code. So we're going to wrap this in an if statement. And we're going to say if not auto. As I'm editing this video, I realize how stupid I am because I said if not auto, which means that if auto is false, then we want to automate it. It's still going to work, but it's going to default to automate it every time you go onto the website. So I'm going to fix that, but not here in the video. So now let's jump into the web browser and try and find a good spot within the HTML to slap a button in there to trigger on or off our script. So if we hop into the page and hit F12 to turn on our Chrome dev tools, we can see all of the HTML. So we can see right here this title. I want to put a button, you know, somewhere around there. The title is an image tag. That just means it's displaying an image and it's not actual text. This can be kind of tricky for us to work around, but I have a solution. Let me walk you through exactly what I think will work. So in HTML, we have this type of element called a div. And a div is like a container for other elements inside of it. There's nothing special about a div. It doesn't display anything in a certain specific way, but it's a nice way to containerize a bunch of elements and then apply styling to them. And basically for the regular PopCat website, they're taking an image of the title text and centering it on the top of the screen. While this works for them, if we want to create an extension where we're gonna add a button to the screen, it's gonna be difficult to put the button in the right place without having that image tag being wrapped around a div. So what we're going to do with JavaScript is create a div of our own, add some styling to it, copy paste this image tag here and slap it inside of our newly created div and then replace the original image tag with that div. And then we're going to take a button and slap the button into the div so we can align them and center them however we want. The first step to do that, of course, is we need the image tag. So let's go back to our web page, make sure dev tools are open, inspect element onto this image, and then we can right click on the element here and copy element. This is gonna keep it in our clipboard and we're gonna paste it later in our actual code. So let's jump back over into our code and the first thing we're gonna do is create our div. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a div variable and we're gonna set it equal to document.createElement and pass the string div into the parameters. And then we're gonna add an ID to our div and call it Sonic Div. And then we're gonna add some classes to the div using div.classList and setting it equal to a string of all the classes that we wanna use 
we're going to use sonic-div. This is where we're setting the inner HTML of the div so we can take that image tag that we copied off of Popcat and throw it into the div automatically. And just like that, you've successfully created a div, but we haven't actually added it to the web page yet. So what we need to do is use document.query selector so we can find an element on the page and replace it with our div. We're gonna look for that image tag, and luckily that image tag has a title class as you can see right here. So in the query selector here, we can pass in the string dot title, which is gonna tell it to look for an element with the class title. And then once we find that element to replace it with our div that we just created, we just wanna call dot replace with and pass in the div element. Okay, this is great. So keep in mind, all we've done so far is actually taken the image off of Popcat and put it inside a div and then replace that on the website. That doesn't do anything. It doesn't change the way anything looks. Right now, we need to actually add a button so we can toggle on or off the extension. So we can create a new element called button and then set it equal to the return value of document.createElement and then pass in button to create element. So it creates a button element for us. And then we can set the text content of the button. This is the text that actually shows up on the button. And then we can add a CSS class to the button. And then we need to add some functionality to our button. So we go ahead and create this on click method. And all this does is take the auto value and set it equal to the opposite of its value, essentially toggling it on or off. And that's pretty much all we need for the button. Now we can do the same thing that we did to the div and add it to our document. So we can do document.query selector and we're gonna look for that div that we added. So we're gonna look for the sonic div ID. And then we're gonna add this button as a child element to that div selector. And now you're done here, but we need some CSS. So let's hop into that style.css. So we're not gonna do anything too fancy here. We just wanna create some basic CSS to make our button stand out a little bit. So the Sonic Pop class, if you remember, is the class that we added to our button. So you can see all the styling that we're putting on that button, the background color, the foreground color, the font size, the font weight, etc. This is basically just gonna make the button look like this. And then down below we have our Sonic Div class. We're just basically making it a flex box and adding some centering so we can sort of justify everything properly. And there you go, our extension's done. We can just hop into our browser now, turn on developer mode on the extensions manager, and we can go ahead and load in our file. So let's go look for our folder that has all of the files here. And once we pull that up, we can just select the entire folder and just like that, our browser extension is installed locally. And now we can head on over to popcat.click again and refresh the page. And we should see our magical button pop back up onto the page. And of course, it's automated. So now we don't need to worry about clicking Popcat. We have ascended into the next level of Popcat competition. And before we can publish this to the Chrome store, there's one more final touch we need to add. We need to slap in some images into our manifest.json. This is just our icons, stuff like that. This is what the image looks like. You've already seen it. Now our extension is ready to publish. And publish it I did, my friends. You can now download Sonic Popcat on any web browser that supports Chrome extensions. Obviously completely free, open source. You can check out the GitHub repo down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been fantastic. I hope you had a good time. If you did, please like the video and subscribe for more goofy software content. All right, I'll see you later.